I am joined by a very, very special guest who is a member of Shifts to Success, and he's going to be sharing with you his journey, his uh, expertise, his insights, uh, which have allowed him to gain massive traction in business. And what we're going to be doing is leaving this uh, in the group. So if you can't watch right now, it's completely fine. You can watch back on replay. And if you do type in replay, please do type it in. Um, sorry, if you watch back on replay, please do type it in. And uh, that leads me to say uh, a massive welcome to David. David, how are you doing? Oh, Alex, great. Thank you. Yeah, really good. You? Good stuff. I'm very well. Thank you. Thanks for your time today. Um, David, what we like to start off by asking on these kind of uh, guest appearances on the podcast and these Facebook Live interviews is to start off where uh, we've come from. What was it like for you growing up as a child and, and also where are you from? So I'm from a small village um, in Leicestershire, a very rural kind of setting, as it were quite an outdoor sort of childhood, grew up with my mum, uh, dad and brother uh, in this village. And yeah, I just remember being outside all the time. So on my bike, playing footy and, and around the local woods, camping, stuff like that. And then as time went on, playing in the football teams and rugby teams, so on and so forth. So yeah, quite, a, quite an outdoor kind of uh, upbringing, really. Not a nice time. Awesome. And what would you like as a kid? Was you like academic? Was you, uh, you know, class clown? Was you mischievous? What, what would you like growing up as a kid? I, I was, I was semi-academic, but I worked really hard at school. So, um, yeah, I had a nice time at school. I, I think I, uh, I probably got the grades I, I deserved in the end by uh, just by grafting, really, more than any kind of amazing academic ability. Awesome stuff. OK. And did you go through, did you go to college, did you go to university or anything like that? Yeah, I went to college and then uh, I went to Coventry University and uh, studied engineering there. And again, I played in the rugby team. I had a, had a lovely social time at, at, at Coventry. It was, a, it was a great four years, really great. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Um, and what was kind of your first uh, one of jobs? You know, growing up as a teenager or maybe a young adult, what was your kind of your first job? So I was down in Burton Menswear at Foss Park in Leicester. Literally, the T-shirt table was my domain. <laughs> People try t-shirts on, throw them back on the table. And for £2.86 an hour, I would stand there and refold the whole table of t-shirts over and over. That, that was just like a go in, switch off, start folding these t-shirts off. It's just, yeah, production line, incredible, incredible. <laughs> awesome stuff. And why did you get into that job? Was it just to earn money while you're at university? Yeah, or? just when I was at, um, uh, when I was doing my A-levels, it was a, a, bit of, a bit of pocket money, really. A bit of pocket money. Awesome stuff. And what was kind of the job after that? So the job after that was um, my dad had a factory, obviously in Leicester, Osiery. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was on the production line in the Osiery factory. Well, that was a summer job. So, you know, take some money back to university, um, which uh, that was quite nice, really. Just I do a bit of this, bit of that, just all over the shop. I helped dad with, a, you know, the small jobs that he, he didn't really, you know, want to do or have time to. So I, I quite enjoyed that. And, and from that, I saw... He really enjoyed his job and and how he ran the business to his own kind of his own advantages and how he he ran it exactly how he wanted to run it really so that, that was nice to see nice to see amazing okay awesome stuff and so you've gone through university and um you know you've gone into engineering yep yep what where did the police come from then because obviously you're going down a different path and then all of a sudden you've joined the police where, whereabouts did that come from that's right. Well, um, after university, I joined the Tarmac Graduate Scheme as an engineer, and I, I moved all around the country um, in the building products division, making bricks and breeze blocks, things like that. And I ended up a factory manager at Tarmac, uh, but it, it was long hours. It was salaried, sort of 60, 70 hours a week. It was a bit relentless. Um, yeah. So, and it, it was for, for quite a young guy, you know, 21, 22, whatever I was, 23. There was a lot of responsibility, not much remuneration, really. Mm. Yeah. So um, my friend was in the police at the time and he told me all these exciting tales about chasing people through stately homes and car chases and all this exciting stuff that he got up to. And at that age, you you know, that's a big thing in your life, isn't it? You know, I'll, I'll try this. If I don't try it now, um, I never will. So, yeah, I, I applied to the police and, and I got in. Amazing. Was it kind of first time? Was it simple process or? Yeah, simple enough. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, just, although when I, when I did quit my job from, uh, from Tarmac, uh, wife Helen and I went to South America for a few months and spent mm -hmm. all our savings and then had a letter from the police saying, oh, 
your eyes aren't quite 100%. Um, we sent you the offer by accident. You might not be getting in. I was like, ah, it's oh. like a bit of a job spent all my money. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, I did. I passed the eye test. I went to the opticians and passed the eye test. I remember I gave the optician a hug when uh, when she said I could go in. I was like, I was like Phew. I was like, <laughs> amazing, amazing stuff. So you've obviously joined the job. Well, how old are you at this point? How old are you when you joined the job? I was around 25. I was around okay. 25 at the time. Okay, so 25 years old, you've just got a new job in the police and obviously you go through your probation. Kind of, Where do you go next? Are you stay in on response or do you go into a different department? Yeah, even before I left um, my probationary period in uniform, I, I did an attachment with um, the CID and I really liked that. I just, I just, I just, yeah, that was the more serious side of things I liked. So I was in the robbery team, robbery squad and burglary team quite early and I effectively never went back to uniform so in less than two years I was in the CID did what, a couple of years in the robbery and burglary squads five six years in serious crime that was a cool job so um, sudden deaths unexplained deaths bank robberies uh, drugs production and importation jobs firearms knives GBHs that, that was a that was a cool job did that for five or six years okay and what 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 um why did that appeal to you more so? Was it the the problem solving ability or something else? It just felt a bit more worthwhile. Um, I found the uniform stuff was just almost social problems mm. more than more than actual crime and um, policing issues. I thought, and and these are your your standard crimes, proper crimes, as it were. Mm. That's what I thought. So yeah, so that's that. And then so after serious crime, I went to. Uh, the Mosovo team, which is management of violent and sexual offenders, which is the sex offenders register. As mm. it were. So on there, I've been there seven, nearly eight years. Um, 30 odd guys on the re- on the sex offenders register, and you try and prevent them from committing further offences, either through enforcement or through um, a bit of rehabilitation. Some works for some, some works for other, and for other guys, nothing works at all. It's just, uh, uh, this, that's been an interesting job. That's been mm. an interesting job. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So obviously, and you are one of, uh, you are one of many, there's people who do love the job out there and, you know, shift success and not, you know, anti-job whatsoever. You love the job. You actually really like your job. You enjoy the police. You believe in what you do, which is great. And um, for you with that kind of mindset, what made you think about business in the first instance? So um, I think the, the pension really disappointed me when that, when that all changed. That I, I felt really betrayed about that. Um, then there's the pay freezes. So uh, there's been a lot of pay that, that disappointed me. Well, we just got over the financial crisis and then COVID's come along. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just I think it's just probably time for a bit of a change, really, for it, you know, business wise. Um, I would, I'd like to be my own boss. I, I'd like to not be told where I'm going and what I'm doing, what hours I'm working. So the flexibility and, and to do something more positive in society. It's never that great when a, when a police officer knocks your door. It's for one or two reasons. Something's bad has happened to you or you've done something bad to someone else. Uh, yeah, to someone else. Mm. And the police are here to kind of remedy the situation. So um, to do something more positive than just dealing with the negative, I think, is a, is a big thing. Yeah. OK, awesome. And, and going back to the pension, you mentioned pension. That was kind of a big thing for you, you know, did that change your outlook on the future? So you're not maybe staying in the job until you actually reach your pension or, you know, why did it impact you? Why did it, why did you feel like it a bit of a betrayal almost? Well, when, when you sign up at terms, conditions, you know, you, you sign up for X, Y, and Z. And that was a big one. A lot of my friends earn more than me. Um, the guys I went to university with, my, my friends I grew up with. And the pension was always there. Well, listen, at 55, I am going to retire. And that, that was the trade-off as such. Well, that's gone now. That's gone to 60. And I've no doubt it'll, that'll, that'll go further out as time progresses. There'll be another review. So, and so it took that away from me. And that, that sort of got me thinking about what else can do and, and can I do something in business? Awesome. Awesome stuff. Okay. And I'm assuming the reason why you didn't look for another job uh, outside the place is because of the, you mentioned about you want to be your own boss. You want to be able to you know, do things with a bit more freedom, right? Yeah, that's right. So... Again, looking back on, uh, on on my dad and his kind of his business and what he did and how he lived his life, I think I think that's a nice way to be. There comes a point in your life where 
you don't necessarily want to be told what to do by other people and and if you just go it alone you know you roll the dice you see what happens when if you do the work you get paid for it so and i, and I think i'm about there now Awesome. Awesome stuff. Okay. Uh, talk to me about your business then. So um, obviously I know what your business is and it's how good it's going, but um, just give some insight. You know, first of all, how did you, uh, in fact, tell us what your business is first and then I'll follow up with the next question. Sure. So Leicester Campers Limited, um, I buy brand new motorhomes and I rent them out and, and I sell them. That's, that's what it is in a nutshell. Amazing. And how, how did you end up on that idea? There's loads of business ideas out there. What, what made you land on that out of all of them? Well, it, it goes back quite a while, really. When Before I got married, I, I mentioned earlier, we went to South America. Helen and I did um, did a bit of travelling. We've been to Australia, you know, pack, backpacked around India, Egypt. You probably can't do that now. Um, you know, Asia. We, we've been everywhere with these backpacks. We had a great time. Lo- loved it. Love the freedom, the flexibility. You know, if you like somewhere, you stay. If you don't, just move on, find somewhere different, find somewhere better. So, you know, just a great holiday and a, and a great, you know, that great sense of freedom that you have with it. When we got married, um, we quickly had a daughter and the motorhome was really an extension of the backpack. It gives you the same type of holiday, but you can put all the baby stuff in there as well. And so you've got the same kind of freedom. You can, you know, if you like somewhere, stay. If you don't go, you, you can do whatever you like with it. And, you know, over the over the first few years of being married, we did 50 nights a year in a motorhome every single year. Wow. So we'd be down Italy. We'd travel to Portugal, all the, you know, the whole kind of um, longitude of Portugal, Spain, France, Germany. We, we went everywhere. And I mean, it's, it's just a it's just a great holiday. It's a great holiday. Amazing. And what do you love most about camper vans? Is, is it the the flexibility or something else? Yeah, ab- absolutely. I, l- I love the flexibility. I, I love the way you, you know. If you find a nice spot, you can just stay there. That's what. This is us for the night. We've got this cliff. We've got this beach. We've got this campsite. We've you know whatever it might be. You can park in the in the car park of Euro Disney on your way back up through France. You can watch the fireworks last thing at night, then be first in in the morning. There's the you know the opportunities are endless. What you know. You can do that then you're in paris you can go and have a meal in paris next day you're on a sand dune somewhere on the on the west coast of france it's just the variety is fantastic fantastic amazing amazing stuff and just going off on a tangent now what would you say is your best kind of what's been your best trip with the family just so every year we used to get the ferry from portsmouth to santander northern spain have a cabin overnight have a nice meal because the, the the restaurants on the on the ferries are excellent the french and then drive across northern spain up uh, western France on that silver coast there's no one there it's like just just beaches and waves brilliant uh, Biritz up the Loire Paris Euro Disney and then Calais and home over about two weeks that's we did that for about three years in a row just brilliant and I, I always wow. sell that to people I always, <laughs> I always recommend that trip and I have loads of customers do that and they're all happy when they come out so it's a great trip amazing so it sounds to me like you're using your experience of all that years of going on camper van, you know, holidays and you're utilizing that in your business now, right? Yeah, that's right. I was effectively working and, uh, and finding out and, you know, fact finding when I was doing all that stuff. So anywhere people go is I've probably been there and I can help them out with itineraries and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm not just sort of selling this thing. I, it is what I do. And it, it, yeah, so it's quite easy for me to do. And, and as you can tell, I like doing it. It's, uh, yeah, definitely. You sound passionate about it. Um, so, so you was in business before you met me, you met Shift Success. Um, first of all, how did you come across Shift Success? I was in, the, I remember I found that the quiz on Facebook mm-hmm. um, and I was in Morzine in France on holiday and I just, I just typed in all my answers to the quiz and it really aligned, almost mirrored from what I'd written in my career book. So I've always had a book um, throughout my career, you know, a red book, and I write down my aspirations, what I want, how I'm feeling. And the questions on the quiz were remarkably similar to the questions I asked myself and 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 write the answers to. And when it, it came out, and, it, and I like the way that it um, quantified my answers, right? it's like 90, 93%, whatever it was, you should be a business, you know, run your own business and that. And, and I knew that already. I knew that. Mm. almost just needed some reaffirm uh, you know affirmation of that um so then mon you rang me and and i knew that i was going to sort of sign up and and yeah 
here we are. Awesome, awesome stuff. Okay. Um, so who is your typical customer? So in the camper van, you know, I could go on your camper van trips and, you know, I probably will do in the future. You're selling me on it already. Um, but who is your kind of typical customer? Who, who comes to you again and again who wants to go on this camper van experience? So really, my, my bread and butter, if you like, are families, 2.4 children in, in the summer holidays, in the bank holidays, Easter, whenever. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's families who want um, want an adventure. They like being outside. Probably fed up with Spain or you know going abroad, and particularly this year, that's that's a big thing. People don't want to go abroad or can't go abroad. And also, I have a lot of um, people who had experiences as children camping and who had a nice time. And the partners might have gone and not had such a nice time. So the tent may have blown down. It rained. It leaked. It just they had an, an argument putting it up. And, and the, what the camper means is that you can, you can go to campsites and, and do all these adventurous stuff, but you don't have to stay in a, a cold, wet, windy tent. You can have all the facilities of, of home, really, while you're in these nice, adventurous places. So, so the, there's the families and, and, the, and the reticent partner, as it were. And then uh, I get people go to Glastonbury every year for the festivals. Again, you're safe, you're warm. You're, you're showered, you're one of the few clean people at Glastonbury. Um, G, Moto GP, F1 GP, um, they, they keep coming back every year, the same people for, for, the, uh, for those festivals and events. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, what kind of problems do you think you solve for your customers? So there's, obviously there's other businesses out there and I've seen the reviews you get from your customers, which are amazing. It makes me proud seeing them. Why do you feel like, you know, what, what problems you solve for your customers? Why do they keep coming back, do you reckon? I think overall, my, the, the quality of the vehicles is amazing. Our customer services is amazing as well. You know, through COVID, we, we didn't keep people's deposits. I'll just, I'll just give them money back. I don't want to be Ryanair. And, and the people I gave the deposits back to have all booked for this year anyway. So, you know, you, you give people a good, fair um, customer experience and, and and they keep coming back to you amazing amazing stuff okay and how would you say you kind of solve the problem so for me for example if i wanted to go to a camper van you know experience and i didn't know where i wanted to go or anything like that you would obviously share your recommendations but is there any is there anything else that you know that you share to make your customers camper van experience the best yeah so i mean we give a, a really long handover not long it it's, it's as long as the customer wants, really. Sometimes it can be two hours. Sometimes, you know, it's 20 minutes. But I go around all the van. I've got a digital library about how everything works. There's a, a fire stick in the TV in the campers. If they're in the, you know, highlands in Scotland or somewhere, they can just, oh, the fridge isn't working, what have I done wrong? Just mm -hmm. click on the TV, see how it works and, and reset it sort of thing. All these sort of things. The, the vans are stacked with all the things that you'd need for a, a good camping trip. There's nothing in there that you know that's missing. Everything's inventoried and ready to go. When when I sell vans as well, they, they come fully loaded. Um, I just sold a van this week to a guy and his friends, and he, he's over the moon. He's over the moon with this van. I put gas bottles in there. I put hose pipes. Just the you know leveling ramps. All these things that the big dealers they'll charge you a grand for. I just, I just put them in mm. and. He's over the moon with it. He's ready to go. He doesn't need to worry about anything. He's just going to, when April 12th comes, drive off to a campsite and he can be confident everything he needs is in there. And he's, he's over the moon with that. And I'm happy because he's happy. And in two years, he'll come back and buy another one from me, no doubt. Amazing. So that's kind of that your, your strategy, right? So you're you're going, you're like, what's the, what's the saying? You know, you're under, uh, under promising, over delivering, right? You, yeah, right. They don't, they don't expect these things, but you're doing it anyway. They're thrilled yeah. with it. And of course, they come back because they remember that you did go over the board with, you know, the things that you've given them. So, is that yep, right? Yep. yep, absolutely right. I mean, I had a van that, that um, had a water leak in it uh, last year. It wasn't it wasn't anyone's fault. It just happened sometimes. And I drove down to where he was and swapped a van over old for new. He could have lived with it. But, you know, I took him a, another a fresh van. He was happy, continued his holiday and I could get back, finish it off. And, yeah, it, you know, it was, it was just perfect. Works out well. And he was over the moon with that. Amazing. It sounds to me that you've got a real close relationships uh, with your customers. Um, and as you know, you know, people watching this or people listening back on the podcast, you know, repeat customers are a better type of customer because you don't have to spend money on marketing, et cetera. Um, 
David, you've done very, you know, to go back before I go on to the next question, sorry, you know, if you're selling camper vans, you know, what, what kind of price range are they going for, do you think? So the new ones, they, the, the ex-hire ones go from anything from 40 to 55,000. So, but they're all kind of, you know, a year, 18 months old, absolute tops. Usually I swap them every six months to keep wow. them new. When people go in them for the first time, they still have that. A new car smell about them and that and that, mm. they're just amazing they are there's no kind of wear and tear damage they're all they're all perfect they're all perfect amazing and where do you think your customer service because you obviously you're very good at customer service so is your team with regards to that you know where does that come from do you think is it do you reckon it's your skill set in the police and you know dealing with stuff there or, or somewhere else yeah I, th I think that definitely helps i mean in the police you need to have an amazing amount of patience and and i I've got that, no, but you know, dealing with the people I've I've dealt with for the last you know, seventeen years, whatever it is, I have got a lot of patience, and and I like to see things um, done done fairly. I'm not, you know, if, if if we have a bit of a crash and you know the break a bumper, I'm not going to charge a thousand pound for a new bumper. I'll simply replace the bumper, cost price to the customer. And a bit of labour for me. I'm not I'm not interested in in taking a lot of uh, you know money. I know people will charge a thousand pounds for that. Mm. I'd, I'd rather do it at a fair price that's fair for them, fair for me, and then them come back and use me year on year on year. So Amazing. being fair and objective, like like I am in the police, then I, I think that's served me well in the in the camp van world, as it were. Amazing. It is. It, it, you, I can see, you know, the way you're speaking about this, I can see the strategy is customer service, always doing the right thing is what I'm getting from you. Always do the right thing. Um, so you've done very well in business and everyone likes to hear about the success stories and stuff like that. But what kind of challenges have you had in business? Talk to me about COVID. How, how's, I know you've been sold out during COVID and I think that's down to your customer service, your customers who love you. But, you know, what other experiences have you or challenges have you had around COVID or your business as a whole as you've as you've grown? So um, COVID was was challenging. I mean, I ordered some for the first time last year. I ordered some new vans, so they came from the from the factory. I, I started with like quite an old van, and and I built up every year, getting newer, getting more vans. But I had my first ones uh, arrive last year from Italy, and they just didn't arrive. And it was getting closer and closer and closer to sort of July, and uh, I'd got bookings for them. They were promised in February. And, and they didn't come and they, and they did eventually come out uh, in in July and that they were they were worrying times so I thought I might be letting people down here and but mm. they did come I had about a two week buffer so it, it was all right in the end so that was challenging I've had a guy drive through a car washing one and rip the roof off oh tell, tell me about experience what did you do that what did you do there what happened well the, <laughs> there's not a lot you can do is there you know you, you can get cross or you can get you know frustrated but at the end of the day, I have a camper van with no roof on it. And, you know, he rang me and he says, I'm sort of stuck in a car wash. Can you come and help me? I, was, I, I don't really know what I can do with that. You know, I'm not, I'm not a car wash expert, just, you know. And he let the tyres down, he, he dragged it out. It was, it was a bit of a nightmare and that, that, that ruined the season in that van sort of thing. But again, when, when you look back and at the time, there's nothing you can do. Just crack on, get it fixed, get a replacement van and, and, and move forward sort of thing, which is, which is, yeah, what you do in the police, isn't it? You overcome these problems and you, and you move on sort of thing. Mm, amazing. Personal, you didn't do it on purpose. It's okay. Yeah. You say you, you come across a very, very patient guy and that obviously you utilize that in business, right? You don't panic under pressure. Yeah. It didn't get you anywhere. Does it? It didn't get you anywhere. No, amazing. Not. Do you feel, you know, talking about your, your skill sets or your attributes as, you know, as a police officer and an entrepreneur, what skill sets do you believe you've transferred from the police into business? You mentioned patience already, but what other kind of skill sets do you believe you've yeah, transferred? So you've got your fairness, your, your patience, um, even things like interviewing people. But really, the, the police is quite a, it's quite narrow in what you do sometimes. It, it doesn't, a lot of it doesn't move into business. You know, mm. it, you, I, you know, I can interview people all day and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Direct communication. Always, yeah, communication is good and listening skills are very important mm. as well. So that's, I suppose that's a good one. You know, and, that, and I know that James talks about a lot of that in sales, doesn't he? And that, that, that does, you know, if you're an interview with someone, let them talk. It's not about what you say. You don't care what you say. They're, they're the person talking. The court's interested in what they say, not what you say. And that, I suppose that's the same as well. 
Amazing. So if a client tells you, hey, I'm looking for to go to France uh, and this is my budget, you know, uh, I want to do in these months, you, you listen to that information and obviously you create that experience for them through your through your product. Yeah, right. And which van um, would most be suited to their party and where they're going and, and what they're going to do? Can they climb a ladder to get up to the to the over cab beds or do they need a bed, a rear bed, you know, at the back, which is a, a you know, constant made up bed? How big a van, how confident are they driving? There's so many all the all the vans have all their own characteristics and and they're, they're all a balance as well so some people want everything and then they don't want, i don't know remember homer simpson's car and it was just just massive and like an american rv or something and it it doesn't work like that if you have one if you have one big thing something else has got to be smaller that you know so to explain that it's all a balance as well is um, is part is part of uh, what i do awesome awesome and how long have you been with shift success now it must be approaching a year yeah, I think so. Yeah, just over a year. Last last January, I think the first course was. Yeah. Last wow. One. Awesome stuff. Okay. And what's kind of changed for you since you've joined, you know, personally or professionally uh, around your life or, or business since joining? So my, mindset wise, I suppose I've uh, I've really pushed on. I've, um, I think I was doing a, a lot of stuff right on my own. And that affirmed that to me, which which was really good for my confidence and uh, and self-belief. So that that was excellent. But then I was never arrogant enough to think that I was an expert in sales or marketing or products or branding or anything like that. And then just to have um, those guys on hand has been has been superb. I've learned so much from them. Just, you know, you can go so far on your own, but without researching it and, and putting some work in, you, you're never going to know everything like that. And, not, you know, being ex- not being exposed to anything like this in the police. Um I didn't know anything like that about the sales and the finer points. So it's really given me confidence to push on and yeah, and go for it. Amazing. So you're in a position now as well, which is great. Um, you after 17, I think 17 years in the job. Yeah. 17 and a half years and amazing stuff. Okay. And that's an achievement in itself, but you've now actually, uh, got approval for career break. How does, how does that feel? How does that feel for you personally? Sadness, excitement, or. Both. Originally, I, I put my form in, and uh, I was I was a bit sad. Police is I spent as much time in the police as I did at, at school, and I, I thought I'd be all ecstatic and really happy. And I just and I just felt a bit like hmm, that, that feels a bit strange. But then, I mean, that was over a month ago now, and I just feel every day a little bit lighter and a little bit freer, and just uh, it's definitely the right decision. It's definitely the right decision. I mean, how. What kind of, you know, what kind of impact does that make on you and your family knowing that sooner or later that, that this year you're not going to be in the police? You know, how, how does that, how does that feel for you? You know, are you, you know, are you going to do more things in business? Do you feel like, you know, oh, my, I'm independent now because now you've got this choice to do what you like and live life on your terms. Emotionally, how does that feel? Yeah, it, it, it does. I feel really calm inside to be honest. I feel calm and confident just having time so there's so many opportunities that I, I can I see and I can't pursue because tomorrow I've got to be in the office at eight o'clock so you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to set up a parts department I'm going to sell parts and spares um, I'm going to try and get into sales um, and sell and, and be a dealership I suppose this is my ultimate goal so when you know, I can I can drive to Scotland, fetch a van, bring it down here, and try and flip it. There's so many different things and areas that I can I can, you know, go into, and that and that's just motorhomes. There's there's loads of other stuff as well. You know, I'm quiet in winters, so I'm going to have to find something to occupy myself with in winter. I don't know what that is yet, but I'm looking forward to finding something and finding out. Amazing, amazing stuff. What would you say is one of been uh, or what's been one of your um, key highlights so far in your entrepreneurial journey? Oh, so uh, two things. When, when, the, when the new vans came last year, yeah. they were just, oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, they were just amazing. I, I was so happy with those. Um, and well, since then, I've had 17 um, new vans. Well, I will have done come July this year, run through the business. So that's, that's been good. And, and I still, you know, from da- I was down there last night, Sunday night, looking about with them. And, uh, and I'm just happy being around them. So the new vans arrived and that was a big thing because I've always had older, um, older vans, these new ones were just off scale beautiful. I, I really like them. And then having my own business premises was a big thing as well. So I have a barn where I store them and, and sort of run things out of. 
and I was, I'd, I'd do a late shift and go down to the barn and, and, you know, put the shelves up, sort out the plumbing, all that sort of thing. And it's just for me, you know, it's no one else's. No one else has any interest in it or any stake in it. That's just for me and something I've built for myself. And I, and I, I think that's great. When, when you sort of stand in the middle there and, and you look around and you think, yeah, I, I've built this. That's, that's, a real, that's a real nice feeling. Awesome stuff, mate. Really good stuff. Um, going back to the pension, that was kind of the the first initiation of you thinking, okay, well, maybe I should think about going into business. What would you say? So I obviously, as you know, you know, a lot of people stay in the job for the pension, even though it's getting diluted and changing and even for the salary. For you, that wasn't something you was willing to do. What helped with your decision making process to go, you know what, this isn't for me anymore. And I'm going to build another option for you to ultimately now being free from the job and living life in your terms. What do you reckon helped so other can learn, others can learn from you and that decision-making process? Because a lot of people get fearful of, oh no, the pension or, oh no, the, you know, my salary. How could you help someone with their mindset overcome that? Yeah, so I think um, with, with the pension, uh, as, as we said earlier, it's probably going to get changed again. I've, my office is full of retired cops who have come back to top up the pension. They're in the 55 you can't live off 18 grand a year or whatever it is you still need something more so that was a consideration and i think one one is important it's not the most important thing in the world far from it you know to have a you know some self-respect some esteem to do something that you want to do and to be happy is is more important than the pension and i'm sure by if you tick all those boxes financially if you're the same or if you're better, if you're worse, it doesn't really matter if you're happy, then you should just do what, what you want to do. And that, I think that's, that's important. I think overall, I'll probably be better off having left the police, but you know, who knows? Amazing. Amazing stuff. Okay. And you mentioned about you going into a dealership type of business with, you know, in the, the, the quieter months, is, is that your vision for the business and why that? Yeah, I think, Again, I just like being around these vehicles. So I can, I'd like to go around different factories, select the ones I want, put them on my, um, my yard, as it were, and sell them as new. That would be the next uh, progression for Leicester campers. That would be, that'd be a lovely thing to do. Maybe, I whether, whether I move out the barn and have kind of a dealership with a glass front and all that sort of thing, I don't know. Or yeah, I don't know, but that that's that's definitely the next thing on the horizon for sure. Amazing stuff. Um, what kind of for any police officer who's listening to this, or in fact, you know, public sector, whether they're teachers or engineer or someone who is really not disliking their job, uh, sorry, not liking their job as much as they had uh, hoped, or maybe they had some change in life, maybe they just had kids, or maybe the pension changes affected them as well. What kind of inspirational advice would you give? knowing your situation now and how you're feeling about leaving the police, what kind of inspirational advice would you give to someone who's thinking about it? So you need to weigh up what you want out of life. Uh, do you want, you know, flexibility? Do you want to work when you want to work? Do you want um, your own, do you want to fill your own financial aspirations? Um, if you want to earn more, just work some more. Can you do that where you are? Um, do you want to be the master of your own destiny? And, and if, if the answer is yes to all those things, then yeah, go for it. Test, try it on a smaller scale, test it, prove it, and then scale it up. Then, you, you, you know, you're not going to lose anything. You, you're probably, if you're working in public sector, you can always go back, get yourself another job as a, whatever you might be, at, at the same hospital or police station or whatever. They're, they're always crying out for more staff. So um, it's not that much of a risk, I don't think. Amazing stuff. Um, David, what do you feel like... Um has been one of kind of the big mindset differences that you've experienced since being in business? I think it's, it's the, it's just the positivity really. I, I think I've, I've really kind of, I've kicked on with that quite well. I mean, even in my industry, when COVID came last year, a lot of people didn't order new vehicles and I, I doubled down and ordered double, you know, that I, I probably should have done, but that's worked out well. So just, just being positive and, and doing things with a smile on your face is, is amazing. Amazing. Amazing stuff. And, and lastly, one of the kind of last questions that I like to ask on the, on these kind of uh, podcasts is, you know, personally, what does entrepreneurship mean to you? 
So it means setting goals and achievements that you can work towards and ultimately reaching the goals and, and being free and having control over your own destiny. Amazing stuff, David. Um, how can anyone get in touch? How can people find out about your um, your lovely camper vans if they want to book a holiday? Um, where can people reach out to you? So we're on uh, leicestercampers.com is the website and all the contact details are on there as well as pictures and videos of all the vans and the, and the digital library about how everything works, etc. Awesome stuff. David, thank you so much for your time today. I just want to say you've been an inspiration to not only to myself, the team at Shift Success, but also the cohorts. Um, you know, 17 years in the job to now being able the choice to, to leave. You've took your career break and, you know, now you get to live life on your terms, something you've built with, you know, your own hard work, your grit. Uh, and now, you know, you're going on to the next chapter of your life. I'm excited for you because I know what's going to happen in your business is going to take off to the next level. Um, and I can't wait to see that journey unfold. Um, I just want to say thanks again for your time time and uh guys for those who are watching if you've got any questions for myself or david uh following this please do drop in the comments section and if you're watching back on replay uh, replay please do type in replay and uh i'll be seeing you all very soon david thank you so much again and uh congratulations on your success so far thank you thank you cheers take care bye, -bye.